Yesterday, uh, uh, we saw a simple uh, relative trace formula, and uh, I sketched also an application. And you saw uh, in the application that uh, uh, to be able to use the simple uh, trace formula, we, uh, we had to put some restrictive conditions on the representation we, we consider. So we would like to have a more general uh, a trace formula. So, in order to, to, to remove uh, these uh, this extra uh, conditions. But from a, a deeper uh, point of view, so in the application uh, yesterday, there was a base change, so between unitary group and the general linear groups. And thanks to the um, extra conditions, the base change of the cuspidal representations uh, was uh, cuspidal, but it is not true in general. Uh, the base change is not compatible with uh, a cuspidal, uh, the cuspidality of uh, automorphic representation. The cuspidality is a nice, uh, in a, is a nice notion, but it is not uh, compatible with uh, Langlands functorialities. And so, from a deeper point of view, uh, the contribution on one side, which are cuspidal and uh, which appear. Uh, um, which appear discreetly in the trace formula uh, should, uh, should also appear discreetly in the other trace formula, but they do not come from the cuspidal, neither the residual spectrum, they may come from the continuous spectrum. So there is a process that makes appear a priori continuous contribution in the, trace for, uh, in, in the spectrum, that make uh, appear discreetly in the relative trace formula. And so uh, the constructions uh, uh, of Arthur for the usual trace formula uh, have, have this, uh, this feature. So in my lecture, um, I will review um, Arthur's uh, basic uh, construction, basic uh, truncation. So for the, this is for the usual, the usual trace formula. So it was noticed by, um, by Laurent Laforgue in his thesis that uh, for a function field and the group GLN, uh, Arthur's construction has, are very close to familiar construction in, the, in algebraic geometry, in the, the geometry of, uh, of vector bundle. It is close to the notion of semi-stability, and I will try to, um, to follow uh, Laforgue's uh, uh, point of view. So let me begin. So with the, the context, so this will be the Arthur Salberg. Trace formula. So yesterday I present this as uh, G cross G mod G mod G. So G is a connected reductive group over F. F Say is a global field. So uh, either a number field or um, the function field of uh, a smooth uh, projective curve over a finite field. And instead of this uh, double quotient, I will consider, I will prefer to consider the action by conjugation of G uh, um, on itself. So essentially, the, the problem of the trace formula is to give the meaning to the following integral. So I remember, I recall that the G is GF, GA, mod gf, the, the adelic point mod the rational point. We have our measure, and the k x x. So this is uh, the automorphic, automorphic kernel of yesterday. But uh, we, look it, uh, we look at it uh, only at uh, the di diagonal. And it is given, I recall, by the sum of rational point of f x minus 1 gamma x, and uh, f is a test function.
Okay, so in general, this uh, this integral it, uh, is divergent for uh, for first uh, uh, quite stupid reason is that we have the center it acts trivially and the center uh, so maybe uh, isotropic and uh, so the, the adelic quotient is uh, is non-compact so in general uh, we can replace. So we have the group GA. Uh, there is a map to a vector space. The dual of the lattice of uh, characters. So simply I can, if I want uh, something additive, I look at uh, the logarithm of the product of uh, uh, normalized uh, absolute values. I take the logarithm and uh, I have a kernel, GI1. So if, S, if F is a function field, uh, sorry, if F is a number field, uh, this is surjective and uh, I, um, I have a section, so AG infinity, so which is a central a group at uh, the Archimedean place of GI. Okay, so we can uh, replace this quotient by GA1 mod GF or by J mod GF AG infinity. So we we have a, the same kind of construction for uh, for a function field. Uh, okay, so I prefer to to look at uh, this uh, this question. So this amounts to to look at uh, at automorphic representation uh, uh, with uh, central characters is uh, trivial in this group, for example. So, even if I look at uh, this quotient, so it's, uh, it has a property to be a finite volume, but it is uh, not compact in general. Not compact, and uh, the kernel function on the diagonal is uh, of moderate growth, but it is not uh, rapidly decreasing, and uh, the integral. Uh, does not uh, converge in general. So let me uh, uh, let me uh, see what uh, what is happening exactly. So let me look at the group G is uh, GLN, and uh, I will consider for the moment F is a function field. of a smooth projective curve over a finite field. Okay. So I will consider K a maximal compact subgroup in GFA. So here K is a product of our all close point of C of the OV point of G, where OV is the completion of the, the, log, le, the local ring at V. So this is the close point or the places, if you prefer. Okay. So this is a maximal compact subgroup. Uh, and in fact, uh, the quotient of J mod K uh, as an, an interpretation in terms of uh, a vector bundle. So let me consider E a vector bundle on C of rank 
n, so this is the same n as here. See, see the curves. Thank you. OK. And uh, I look at a uh, uh, vector bundle plus the trivialization of the vector bundles uh, at the generic point of C. So identify the generic fiber with uh, f to the n. OK, so now I for, each, uh, for each close point, I can look at uh, the restriction of uh, the vector bundle. So the ve vector bundle is, uh, is in OC module, uh, uh, which is uh, locally free. So in particular, uh, here we get uh, uh, OV module free of rank n, uh, which uh, uh, which is a submodule of the restriction to spec FV. So the FV is a fraction field of uh, OV. And thanks to the trivialization, this is identified to AV2 to, uh, to the n. So the, the data of the vector bundle plus the trivialization uh, provides a OV module, a sub uh, OV module of uh, FV uh, to the n free of rank n. And such a module is of the following shape. This is GV for the natural action of uh, GLNV of the standard uh, OV module uh, free of uh, rank n, OV to the n. And GV, GV belongs to GFV mod GOV. So in fact, uh, um, this trivialization extends to, um, to an open uh, uh, fine subset. And uh, for almost all the uh, cross points, uh, the lattice here is a standard lattice, which means that GV is in fact the trivial uh, class. So what we get is if I take the collection of GV, I get an Adelie point of G mod the maximal uh, compact subgroup K. So in this way, I can identify a vector bundle for rank n plus a generic trivialization with the element of G A over G O. And it, if I, uh, I want to forget the trivialization, so I have uh, to use the action of uh, GF on the trivialization. So the uh, changing the trivialization is uh, nothing else but an automorphism of Fn, that is a, a point of G of F. Yeah, uh, yeah, oh, sorry, this is K. Ah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So if we forget the trivialization, what we get is an equivalence between the grouped fib n of vector bundles of rank n with the groupoid quotient of the set j mod k divided by the action of gf. So we, are, we have already 
since such uh, things, uh, this, uh, this category is as, uh, as object the element of this set and uh, the automorphism um, uh, are the stabilizer uh, of the point. Okay. So now, now I can compute in terms of vector bundles an example uh, of, uh, of the integral. So let me, let me take f, the characteristic uh, function of k, which, is, uh, which uh, in the function field case it, uh, is a non-est uh, test function. Um, the R measure is normalized, normalized so that the volume of K is 1. Uh, okay, so uh, we are trying to compute. So I will put a 1, so So remember, one means the, the kernel of, uh, of the map. And this corresponds to vector bundle of degree zero. So each time I have, I have an adelic point uh, in J mode K, I can associate a vector bundle in G, E uh, sub G. So what is the meaning of this, uh, uh, of this, uh, this sum? This is uh, the number of element gamma, this is the number of the cardinality of a gf intersected with g k g minus 1. And uh, if we think about uh, this uh, correspondence, this equivalence, uh, this is the cardinality of the automorphism of the vector bundle eg. And now, since the volume of k is 1, I can decompose the integral first in a discrete sum. Of course, I have to take into account the fact that the, the group k acts on this, but it has stabilizer. So, I have to divide by k intersected with g minus 1, gf, g. So uh, the double, double bar means uh, the cardinality. And uh, in the numerator, I have also the cardinality of the automorphism, the group of g, uh, of eg. So in fact, you see that uh, this set and this set have the, have the same cardinality. So in fact, we are summing over the isomorphism classes of vector bundles of rank n and degree zero of one. Mm -hmm. This is the computation in this case of uh, this integral. And the problem is that the isomorphism classes, uh, there are infinitely many uh, isomorphism classes. It's uh, easy to see. Sorry? Um, you have written 
calligraphic E sub G. Yes. What, what is that? Yes, so uh, I start from a class, Nadelic class, and I associate a vector bundle to, to this. Ah, well, but the element small g, ah, this, this is, uh, ah, okay. okay. It's okay? Yeah, okay. Okay. So, for example, already for uh, uh, the projective, uh, projective line, uh, in a rank two, we have vector uh, bundle OD plus O minus D, where D is a positive integers. So they are, uh, they are uh, vector bundles of uh, rank two, and they are non-isomorphic. Uh, non so the sum is uh, infinite. And uh, so the uh, one way to... Uh, to, uh, to have a finite sum is uh, simply to uh, restrict the number of isomorphism classes. And the, so the problem here is that the vector bundles may have a sub-bundle uh, of large degree. For example, here you see we have O of D, which is a sub-line bundle inside the vector bundle, and it has a non-bounded uh, non uh, and bounded de degree. So this uh, leads to the notion of stability, but before this, uh, I can say that, so if, uh, even if uh, we have a number field, so say, even if we have F is a Q, the field of rational, we have a kind, uh, the same kind uh, of uh, interpretation, so, Mutatis on this. So I can, uh, so I replace the difference is that the maximal compact subgroup by, uh, has to take into account the Archimedean place. So we take the, the usual orthogonal groups times the product over all prime of G of ZP. So this is still for G is a GLN. And uh, the interpretation of GA mod K, say the group with quotient, divided by G uh, of Q, uh, so we will use object uh, uh, a la Grison. Uh, this is a groupoid of uh, pairs denoted by E, where L is a Z module of rank N, and uh, Q, Q is a scalar product. Uh, on on uh, L tens R. So this is a vector space. So you can, uh, if you don't like uh, vector bundles on curves, you can think that, uh, about uh, this object. So for vector bundles, we have the the degree, which is, a, which is additive, which can be defined as a characteristic, the earlier characteristic uh, of E for the coherent cohomology, minus the rank of E times the characteristic of the structural, the earlier characteristic of the structural shifts. And uh, in terms of, uh, say, lattice, lattices. We have also a degree. So degree of L is uh, minus the logarithm of the volume, uh, the covolume of the lattice, that is the volume of L tens R divided by, by L. So here I put uh, the, the Euclidean measure that correspond to, to Q.
So in this context, uh, we have uh, almost uh, the same uh, statements as in the case of uh, vector bundles uh, on curves. Okay. So as I said, is that the problem of vector bundle? Uh, they are unbounded in the sense that uh, they may have a sub-bundle of a large degree. And to truncate, say, the set of isomorphism classes of vector bundles, or the set of isomorphism classes of, uh, of lattices in the sense of uh, Grayson. Uh, so what we do is we use the notion of stability, semi-stability. The analog of this uh, D increasing for number two is going towards the cusp, right? Or G. Uh, yes, 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 yes. You have this picture, yes. If you if you like the, the upper half plane. Okay. So the definition. So I will call indifferently vector bundles, so either in the Grayson uh, situation or in the situation of uh, vector bundles. So. So E is semi-stable if and only if for all sub-bundles. So that means uh, a sub-module, uh, sub uh, which is uh, necessarily locally free, but the quotient is also uh, locally free. So for any sub-bundles, we have a slope inequality. So what is the slope? This is the quotient of the degree by the rank. OK. Um, so just some examples. A line bundle is semi-stable. And the sum of two vector bundles is sem semi-stable if uh, and only if the two vector bundles are semi-stable and the slope are equal. So you see for uh, P1 in rank 2, there is only one semi-stable vector bundles of uh, degree 0. And this is O, O C. This is uh, the sum uh, of two copies of the structural shift. So this is, if I use uh, the notion of stability, really, I, I have uh, truncated uh, the set of, uh, of isomorphism classes of vector bundles. So um, I will define the function f on g i. In fact, on j mod k, and in fact, on j mod k mod gf. So, for simplicity, if f is a number field, think about q. Uh, so, this is not the same f, sorry. And fg is one, so this is a characteristic function. If and only if the corresponding vector bundle is semi-stable. And it is zero otherwise. And the fact it, uh, first it is invariant under the center.
This is because the uh, notion of uh, semi-stability uh, is insensitive uh, when you tensorize by a line bundle. A vector bundle uh, is semi-stable if and if tensorized by a line bundle is, is semi-stable. And f is, in fact, the characteristic function of a compact subset of GA mod the center mod GF mod K. So this is particularly clear. Uh, if uh, f is a function field, it's a uh, the field of a rational function of uh, fq uh, because uh, of this, uh, so in rank two, because, because of this result. In the quotient, you have only one, one point. Okay. So we could use this function. Uh, we could put this, uh, this function. So we could integrate only uh, on the characteristic, on the, the compact subset defined by, by this, uh, this function to get something uh, convergent. Okay, in fact, we will, uh, we will do something uh, slightly different. In fact, the notion of uh, semi-stability uh, will uh, provide a partition of uh, the of the adelic quotient, and this partition uh, is uh, is implicit in the following theorem. So, this is the so-called uh, uh, existence and, uh, and unicity of the Arda Narasiman Narasiman filtration. So uh, what does this theorem say? Well, so we start from a vector bundle. And then there is a unique filtration by sub-bundle. Such that First, uh, each uh, quotient so is a vector bundle and uh, is semi-stable. And second, uh, the slope of the quotient uh, are decreasing. So mu f2 over f1 is strictly larger than f3 over f2 and so on. Okay, so let me uh, let give let me give a, an adelic translation of this statement. Uh, so, but, uh, before that, let me let me comment on this theorem, which is which is not uh, uh, really difficult. So where, where does the theorem come from? So first, we can notice uh, if I, uh, I take a D, there is, uh, there is finitely many sub-bundles uh, of of E, such that the degree or the slope uh, is bounded below by D. So we have first this uh, finiteness result. So uh, this result, so essentially, uh, uh, it suffices to prove this so taking extra power, it suffices to prove this for, for line bundle. And for line bundle, say, in the uh, Grayson situations, we are looking uh, of a vector 
vectors in a lattice whose norm is bounded above. So here the bounded below becomes bounded above. And uh, so in, in ball, uh, there is only a finite number of vectors in the lattice. So this is, this is a point for this finiteness uh, result. Okay, so now uh, I, can, I can define the maximal slope of E, that is the maximal The, max, uh, the maximal slope of a subbundle, and the uh, the first uh, vector bundle uh, which appears in the filtration is a vector bundle which uh, whose uh, slope is a maximal slope, and it is of maximal rank between uh, these uh, these vector bundles, and you can you can show that it is unique, and then the quotient satisfies some of the kind of property, and there is a, a recursion and. You get, the, you get the theorem. But I, uh, I will use this uh, finiteness here. OK, so now um, I can give you uh, the, the dictionary between this theorem and the, the address. Uh, ça, c'est le plus compliqué à attraper. Mais ici, il n'est pas facile. Peut-être ce que... This hook is better. Perhaps. <laughs> so... The dictionary say à la veille, André Veille. So we are uh, working. So on one side, I have a vector bundle, a generic trivialization. On the other side, I have an element in GA mode K. I want I want a flag of subbundle. Well, in the generic fiber, this is a flag. In group uh, theory, a flag, so you take the, the stabilizer of the flag, you get a parabolic. The parabolic. Uh, I prefer to, to write them as pairs. So the pair is P delta. So P is a standard, standard parabolic subgroup. So if for the standard Borel subgroup of GLN, the, the group of upper triangular matrices. And delta, delta is an element in GF mod PF. So that the, the stabilizer of the flag is a parabolic subgroup delta minus 1 p delta. So this is a parabolic subgroup defined over f. OK. So I, so I have a flag of subbundles. So I want to analyze the quotient. Well, so for my pair p delta, I can look at delta G, and I, I can take the Iwasawa decomposition for delta G. So this is PK, where P is in PA, K is in K, and I can write it as M, N, K, where M is in the standard Levy subgroup, so group of uh, uh, diagonal matrices by blocks, and N is a unipotent radical uh, of n. So now, now m, mp is a product of uh, gln and i, with the sum of the ni is n. 
So uh, accordingly, I can write M as a collection of MI. And uh, MI, so this is in GLN, GLN I A mod the corresponding maximal uh, compact subgroup. And so uh, this uh, datum gives you, gives you one of the quotients, say F i plus one over F i. So what does it mean now that F i plus one over F i is semi-stable? This means that F i for the group GLNI, so the function f uh, that I have defined, it is there, uh, is one. So more generally, I can define a function fp of g. So g is given by Iwasawa decomposition. m is a collection of mi, and this is a product for each GLNI factor of M, of F, of the function, uh, the corresponding function F, evaluated at MI. So this gives you the function FP. And the last condition, so uh, I have translated in uh, adelic terms uh, the first assertion and the last assertion that the, the slope are decreasing. Uh, the slope are decreasing so to translate uh, them I have to introduce so we have the, this vector space AP so the, the, the real dual of the lattice of characters defined over F of P um, and inside, I have a code, uh, which is, so this is, uh, uh, so I, I can see the, uh, the root, so I have, say, the simple root, the simple roots of the center of M acting on the radical independent of uh, NP. And I can see the, the root as linear function on this space. Uh, and I have, I take this condition. So, um, so this, is, this is a code of the AP such that for all simple roots, we have These are this condition. Roots for the center of M or for the, for the maximum force? Not for the maximal torus, for the, the center, the center. Okay, so the, the picture, say, for uh, GL3, yeah. P is a borel, yes? You were decomposing delta G over there. Yes. Just G over here. Uh, okay, so this is a general definition that has nothing to do with here, say. And uh, here, M is attached to delta G, the MI as the component of M, so I take FMI. So if we prefer, I can uh, state this as FP of delta G is one. Well. This is for all I. Yes. Okay, so the usual picture is this. And uh, I introduce to P as a characteristic function of uh, this uh, con. And uh, these conditions means that we have to P, we have so HP of delta G. Uh, so we have, a, in general, we have a map. from GI to uh, AP, and this map, so you use it was a decomposition, and uh, it is given by the logarithm of K of M for each K in K 
Pistol. OK. So now, the Adelic translation of the unicity of the Ardan Narasiman filtration is when I sum over the pair of standard parabolic uh, subgroup and delta in GF mod PF of FP delta G times tau P HP delta G, I get 1. So this is the first. Uh, Uh, this is, uh, so this gives you a partition of uh, GA of uh, GF. So it enables you, in some sense, to understand GA mod GF. So we have, uh, for P equal G, a compact subset. And the other part are associated to parabolic subgroups. They, are, they have a compact, pa compact part, essentially. And they have some part which uh, looks like uh, a cone in a, in a real uh, vector space, so at least in the in the number field case. Okay. So now the, you see that the definition of the function f is uh, perhaps not, not as uh, explicit uh, as we would like. And there is another, another expression for this. So the, the two p, two p is a characteristic function. Yeah, it's a chamber, a cute chamber. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So we have only characteristic function, and there is only one pair attached to G, which gives you one. And we have the following proposition. Um, in fact, we, we can recover the function f as a sum over all pair of p delta as before of tau p hat of hp the delta g. So tau p, so we have If we replace the root by uh, the weight, so this is for the weight, uh, I get, uh, I get uh, another code, AP plus. So this is AB plus. And uh, to at is a characteristic function of AP plus. Sorry? Uh, uh, sign, sign. Thank you. Otherwise, <laughs> this is a done. So we want an alternate sum. So we take the dimension of AP minus the dimension of AG. Okay, so uh, as I said, so the semi-stability gives you a compact, but a quite small compact. So we want to enlarge uh, this, uh, this compact subset. And uh, a way to do this, so introduce a parameter t. So for GLN, this is a collection of T1, Tn with the following properties. It is in the uh, acute cone. Uh, uh, can, I, uh, can you formally give the definition of AP with the plus on the left? NP? Uh, AP. So we have AP plus, plus uh, outside on, on the left. We have the acute and the obtuse. Okay, so you're cone. taking inner product with the weights or the, yes. the so, fundamental weights of the Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so a way to, uh, to define a larger compact is a, uh, 
So you can attach a polygon to the Ardennes-Arasiman filtration, taking uh, for the slope of the polygon the, the slope of the quotient, and you can you can ask that uh, you can uh, uh, you, uh, you can take uh, as a compact the fact that the Ardennes-Arasiman filtration gives you a polygon that is below a polygon defined by such a parameter, and this amount to do the the following things. You replace here h by h minus t. So we have some kind of t stability. This gives you also a compact. And you have also the Ardennes-Arasiman uniqueness. And you have also this statement. And now uh, this statement uh, is essentially true for any reductive group. So at least for t uh, large enough. What does it mean? This means that t1 minus 2 is large and so on. Okay, so this is basically the, the partition of, uh, of gi over gf, but uh, this has been done in the spirit of uh, ardan arasiman filtration, and uh, it does not use uh, Ziegel sets and uh, reduction theory. So what is the link with the, the trace formula? So now I can uh, use uh, this function to truncate the integral. So I put a 1 because uh, I take the kernel. So in fact, uh, this, is, uh, this is not so good because Inside of the kernel, remember, we have the cuspidal part, which is convergent, and we are uh, here we are we are truncating something which is convergent, and also inside the inside the kernel, uh, we have the elliptic the elliptic part uh, of the kernel, which uh, which is the sum of rational points so whose orbit is closed, so which. Uh, which are regular semi-simple, and moreover, that the centralizer is. Uh, essentially an isotropic. And so this gives you the geometric expansion of yesterday. And with this, you, you truncate this. So the idea is to... Uh, hey, Henri, can I uh, ask a question? So can you write down the definition of f, g, comma, t? Its characteristic function of what? Without t oh. as a proposition, with t it's Okay, a so it's proposition <laughs> definition. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Here, here, for us, it's a definition. It is a characteristic function. It is a characteristic function. For us, it will be a definition. Sorry? Without the T, what was the... Without the T? So this alternate sum, which is finite, as I said, because the, the vector bundle of... Uh, of bounded uh, below degrees are finite. So this, this sum is finite, in fact. So this sum uh, makes sense. So without the t, you get the characteristic function of semi-stable vector bundle. And so in the spirit of this formula, we introduce a modified kernel. So we take the same finite sum, so here the sum is uh, infinite. But if I put here uh, this condition, so th the meaning of this uh, condition is that we are summing over sub-bundles such that the slope of f is bigger than the slope of e. Or if you prefer with t, the slope, uh, the, the difference between the slope of f and the slope of e is bounded below some, by, by some, uh, some combination of, uh, of the component of the t. And here I put another kernel evaluated at delta x, delta x. Well, so delta G, delta G. So what is KB? K 
to be the kernel of R of f acting on the space of L2 function on GA mod np of a mod np of f. So you use this kernel. This kernel has, a, has an explicit description. This is say the sum over mm. So because you are truncated uh, part of this kernel, which are already convergent. So, so you do not recover uh, from the nose the, the geometric expansion and the geometric expansion for the most simple terms. Okay. Oh, I will not pass. So the question was, why uh, the truncation here is not so good? What are we trying to do, though? Like, when t goes to infinity, you want to say that it converges to a thing without the t? So the t is just uh, auxiliary here. Yeah? So the question was about the t. So the t is, uh, for, for the moment, an auxiliary parameter. And uh, So the theorem, so we have a, we have a geometric expansion, we have a spectral expansion in this case. So let me explain the geometric expansion. In the case of GLN, it is in terms of characteristic polynomials, B, so this is our polynomial of degree uh, N. And uh, I, t I can take a subsum of each kernel with the restriction on the characteristic polynomials of rational elements that appears. So the characteristic polynomial of gamma is supposed to be B. And in the same way, in the spectral expansion, so we use a coarse spectral expansion uh, according to cuspidal datum. To cuspidal datum. So, so we already uh, seen this, I think. So these are pair of Levy and cuspidal representation of Levy. So this is a Levy of G. And for each, for each uh, P, um, so let me denote this space by L2, L2 sub P. So, so L2 sub P has a decomposition according cuspidal data, so there is an equivalence relation. And the uh, KP is a kernel 
of R of f acting on the factor L2 peak. So this gives you uh, the coarse expansion of the kernels. So not according to conjugacy class, not according to the several representation, but uh, according to something which is uh, coarser. And the theorem is the following. Is that if, if we sum over all cuspidal data, all cuspidal data, of the integral over j a of so I I get with the same recipe the modified kernel attached to B and here I get uh, with the same recipe the modified kernel attached to the cuspidal datum K. So we have this this expansion, so this uh, the characteristic polynomial. And uh, each sum in both sides are absolutely uh, convergent. So this, this is integrated over the diagonal. And uh, if we look, for example, at irreducible characteristic polynomials, uh, then you see that an element in a proper Levy subgroup cannot have an irreducible characteristic polynomial. So in this, in this case, for an, ir uh, an irreducible characteristic polynomial, the modified kernel is simply the kernel attached to the orbit. And you get, uh, as yesterday, an orbital integral times some centralizer. And if you look at the cuspidal datum that it is of the form the group G itself and the cuspidal representation of G, then such things cannot appear in the space LP for P proper. And so in the same way, the modified kernel here is simply uh, the, the pi component of the kernel, as we saw yesterday. And so this gives you the trace on this uh, component. Uh, so the T does nothing? Sorry? In those cases, the T doesn't change those things? Yes, it does not depend. This contribution does not depend on T. Okay. So hmm. I could take T equal to zero. Sorry? I could take T equal to zero for GLN. For GLN, uh, we could take T zero, yes. Yes. OK. So, uh, so I have. I would like time to, to explain the convergence, but perhaps this will be for A, Q, and the equations. So I just want to uh, give you some properties of the distribution, so say B or Q or nothing. of the modified kernel attached to B, K, or nothing. Nothing uh, means the whole uh, modified kernel. So first, it depends on T. And uh, we cannot uh, uh, really get rid of this, uh, this dependence. So, but so, in fact, it is a polynomial in T. So, what uh, we can do is uh, to take a constant term. The other property, so, for example, you can take T0 for GL. And the other property is that, in general, so the group G acts on itself by conjugation. So by duality, it acts on function and distributions. And when I want, 
when I, I, I look at the action on the distribution we get by, uh, by integration of the modified kernel, well, you get something non-zero. So these distributions are non-invariant. And this is a source of difficulty when you want to use uh, the trace formula in comparison. Uh, we want to compare uh, different trace formula. OK. So for, for, uh, for irreducible characteristic polynomial, the contribution we get is uh, quite clear. It is uh, as yesterday, the orbital integral. And the contribution for caspidol, for really caspidol representation of G, is also quite clear as yesterday. And uh, the problem is to find uh, explicit contribution for other, uh, other data. So let me just give um, some, uh, some feelings. So first, uh, there is a case where the characteristic polynomial uh, is uh, separable. Say, for example, these uh, GL2 and the characteristic polynomial B uh, is uh, T times alpha, T times beta, where alpha is not equal to beta. Then, uh, so the, uh, remember that the, uh, so I take the ele an element gamma. So the characteristic polynomial uh, in this situation uh, determines. Uh, just an orbit, a GF orbit. Uh, but the centralizer of such things is the, the, the torus T. Uh, it is not, uh, not anisotropic. And uh, what you get for the contribution? So we have the, the volume of T, but I put a uh, an upper one, so this means that you, you take this kernel by all of this uh, absolute value of the characters, times something which is, which is not, strictly speaking, an orbital integral. So, sorry. So what is the notation A, A say? So A is a centralizer of gamma. So A of A. You, you agree? S. 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 Thank you. As a volume of S. And you get here a weight. So in general, uh, in general, there is a kind of a Jordan decomposition of uh, such contribution. If you, if you look at, um, so this is uh, separable. Sim no, this is simple rules. So in general, uh, if there's a, if if the Cartesian polynomial is uh, not separable. You have a kind of a Jordan decomposition for for uh, such a distribution, and you are essentially reduced to the case where the uh, to the case of the unipotent cone. Okay, so I, I, I have not the time to to say much about this. And for the spectral decomposition. In fact, you compare, you compare the modified kernel with a truncated kernel with the truncated uh, uh, operator, so the truncation operator. So the truncation operator, you, you start from a function on GA mod GF, and you use a quite a similar uh, a similar function, you sum over all pair of p delta, 
with the alternate sum of the tau hat as before. So it depends on the same parameter t. And here you replace phi as a constant term of phi. Uh, this operator has uh, quite uh, remarkable uh, properties. Um, first, it, uh, it uh, transforms a function of a moderate growth into a rapidly decreasing uh, function. Um, and also, on the, cuspidal, on the cuspidal part of the spectrum, it's, uh, it does uh, nothing because the constant term is trivial, so lambda uh, phi is phi, is phi is cuspidal. So the, say the main property is that they transform a uh, function of moderate growths into rapidly decreasing growths. And so this, uh, this enable, so, what we can show is that uh, the modified kernel, at least for large t, this integral is essentially the truncation of the kernel on, uh, of one variable. And the point here is that the kernel has a fine spectral decomposition according to Langland's decomposition. And so the truncated kernel has a fine spectral decomposition in terms of integral of Eisen series and truncated Eisen series. And uh, here, I integrate over the diagonal. So I am supposed to consider at one point the scalar products of two Eisenstein series. So this has no meaning in general because uh, Eisenstein series are only uh, of moderate growth, but with the truncated kernel, uh, this, this scalar product uh, makes sense. So we, we saw it yesterday. And uh, a point uh, to get uh, explicit uh, decomposition in the spectral size is to study is uh, to study uh, this uh, truncated uh, scatter product. Uh, so this is uh, just what I can do. So now just let me uh, let me give some uh, some uh, remark in the in the relative uh, in the relative case. So, I insist on the, on the fact that we have this uh, uh, ardan raziman filtration, which is a, a canonical filtration. This is a unique filtration. And uh, if we restrict, so in the case of yesterday, we look at a, a connected adjective subgroup of G. So, we want to look just at G. This, uh, what does uh, this equality give if uh, instead of uh, G of A, uh, I take my element in uh, H of A? Then say, for example, uh, if, a, if uh, H and its uh, compact maximal satisfy some uh, symmetries, for example, they are stable and there are some automorphism of G, then by canonicity, the pair here should satisfy the, the, same, uh, the same symmetry. This should be uh, also invariant under uh, the symmetry. So in fact, for uh, some uh, connective subgroup, this equality uh, is more simple in the sense that I can take a strict subsum here. And uh, I can uh, redo part, uh, part of uh, Arthur's theory in this setting. So I can uh, redo the modified kernel. I can redo the. I can redo the truncation operator. So if I'm looking just at function on H, not on G, so I can uh, I can restrain myself on the pairs that satisfy the same symmetries uh, are H, and this is, in this way we uh, we get uh, 
the so-called mixed truncation operators that uh, were introduced by Jacques Lapide and Rogevsky in the case of the symmetric space GLN E over GLN F. Or uh, we can recover the truncation operator of uh, Ichino uh, Yamana attached to, uh, to rankin selberg uh, so the pairing, say, and so on. So, okay. So I think I, I will stop here. Thank you. Low battery, so we refuse to turn mm -hmm. on. Your battery. Yes, please. So why does this only hold for T very large? Like, why does this not hold for T zero? Okay. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah. So the question is uh, why uh, this equality is for T large. So for GLN is uh, is just for T positive in the sense that T one is bigger than T two, and, so. and for Chevalier group is also. Also the case. So this is a problem of uh, of other groups. In some sense, the choice uh, is about uh, the choice of the maximal compact subgroup. Uh, there, there is a okay. The, uh, the point is that the, the element of the variable group may have representatives in rational points, may have representatives in maximal compact subgroup, but not both. And so you, you have such a problem. Uh, there's a question on this card that whether this alpha and beta are on the number field or on its algebraic closure uh, with this alpha and beta in the expression of B. Sorry? They're uh, in the number field. Yeah, they are on the number field, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Oh, yes, right. last, last question. Why does this J B Why is it polynomial? Uh, it's, it's a computation. So maybe for the Q&A uh, session? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>